confusion the big one confusion lack of clarity not being able to see things clearly so one can act one can act with a wholesome mentality with wholesome actions with wholesome speech confusion the cause of confusion really comes from not being able to see through the delusion or the illusion that leads to the delusion or the lie now anicca dukkham anatta anicca dukkham anatta not self phenomena is not self so phenomena is not self there's no control not understanding forces of the world for example <clears throat> the evil forces and good forces the difference if you break it down into morality is wholesome deeds and unwholesome deeds right these things lead to confusion when we don't uh, when one does not seek to uh, define or differentiate or discern the differences between wholesome and unwholesome as a start <clears throat> for example the moral precepts uh, give us a guide on what is morally correct and what is morally incorrect for example, right? So, <clears throat> unless we have a good look and a, and, and, and a good look at our actions and how we behave and what comes out of the mouth, what comes out of the mind and goes out there, what kind of physical actions we, uh, what, what kind of physical actions we engage in, right? <clears throat> it's hard to have clarity. Now, clarity comes from penetration, from analysation, penetrating into things, understanding the, the real core root, the core of things, and understanding yourself, understanding, well, this has to be, I guess, the, the, the base, the fundamental is understanding what a human being is, what the body is, what, what the senses are, what the mind is, what thoughts are, all these kind of things. In other words, if we don't understand what the human being is, for example, that the, the human being is impermanent, that this life is impermanent. We're only here for a limited time. We're on a one-way ticket, for example. Not understanding that the, the body ages and it dies, right? It gets old, right? It gets sick. Now, we can't control the body from getting sick. It'll get sick when it wants to get sick. The body feels hungry when it feels hungry. The body will go to the toilet when it wants to go to the toilet. We have very little say. And if you go into even your heartbeat, your heart beats <clears throat> on its own. You don't even have to think about it, like your breath, right? So what control do we really have over the body? Very little. Now, when the heart is good and done, it will just stop. And that's the end of life. And that's just how it is, right? That's just how it is, right? No control over that. Yet we think we've got control over phenomena or things out there when we when really it's all impermanent anyway so this is how this is a way that you can start to clear the confusion in your life and start to understand by firstly studying your body and studying the human condition itself right studying what thoughts actually are right what are thoughts you know what are thoughts what are feelings what are perceptions What's consciousness, for example? What are fabrications? These kind of things. I've talked about them previously on videos before. Uh, I'm not going to go uh, into these areas right now. But basically, starting off with understanding uh, what the body is, is, is just like a, an ABC. It's starting at ABC in terms of Buddhism. Confusion comes from not seeing things clearly. So it's hard to act. So when confusion arises, Right, we have a lot of doubts. When there's doubts, do not proceed. Clear the doubt first. That's actually uh, one of the rules uh, for monks: is if there's a doubt, and one proceeds, that's an offence according to the Buddha, because if you don't clear the doubt, you're not clear about what you're doing. You don't have clarity about what you're doing, so you might cause yourself harm, and worse, cause others harm as well. So doubt and confusion. These kind of things are obstacles, uh, are obstacles to our, our growth and spiritual development. Fear and worry. Fear or steadfastness. 
fear and worry, steadfastness. <sighs> now fear, fear is crippling. It's crippling. And we say that, sorry, lots of mosquitoes today. <laughs> fear and worry comes from, again, not seeing things as they are, but also, I have to say, from a lack of confidence, from a lack of, lack of conviction in your purpose in life, from a lack of conviction in knowing the difference between right and wrong, or correct and incorrect, wholesome and unwholesome. Actually, fear and worry comes from that. When one is steadfast and has full conviction and confidence uh, in their purpose and what they're set out to do. Now, I'm going beyond Buddhism here. I'm talking about in general day, in everyday life, just for anybody. Don't have to be a Buddhist uh, to have confidence, right? But in terms of Buddhism, though, when I bring it back to Buddhism, it's taking refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha and understanding what that actually means. Refuge means when listening to teachings from the Buddha Dhamma Sangha taking guidance from the Buddhist Dhamma Sangha, retreating into uh, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha for guidance, for wisdom, for clarity, when you're lost. It doesn't mean uh, in any way, it doesn't mean submission. Submission is a whole other thing. Submission is you're giving your power to, a to, a, to, a, to an external force and saying you are below that force out there or higher or lower. Or that, you, or that you're at the mercy of this force. We don't do that in Buddhism. We don't do that in Buddhism. right? We don't submit to things that externally. What we do is we take refuge. And eventually we take refuge in our own conviction, in our own wisdom. And that's what this is all about. The idea is you take refuge until your wisdom is developed so well that you free yourself uh, from, from dukkha. From bondage you unbind that's the ultimate aim anyway as far as the third noble truth is concerned so fear and worry fear and worry is always thinking about the future or the past or see if your if your moral precepts are not in line and you're not cleaning house mentally through correct through correct concentration and through, through correct livelihood fear and worry will always come up fear and worry will always come up because there's no conviction, there's no confidence, because you know that you're walking on uh, shaky ground. When your morals are staunch and steadfast, right? When you've, when you've set out and you understand what the difference between wholesome and unwholesome, when you understand the difference between correct and not correct, right? Th this will give you uh, like a, a structure, right? A solid, a solid, rigid structure to navigate with. And through there, you start to gain confidence and you the fear and worry about what happens is less and less because you're engaging in wholesome deeds all the time. So eventually the result will only be wholesome. Now, of course, this is in, in when we're talking about the law of karma and in the worldly, uh, I guess in, in worldly uh, uh, vipaka or consequences because we there is such thing as consequences. But what we're trying to do is go to local Torah, which is go beyond go beyond the law of karma, go beyond wholesome and unwholesome. I mean, that's the ultimate aim um, as, a, as a Buddhist anyway, uh, if not in this life, eventually, right? So again, fear and worry, when, when, or fear, worry, they're obstacles because they just constantly make you panic. Now, things that can cause fear and worry externally are things like debt, bad actions, or you've bad speech to someone, regretful speech, or actions that you've done that are, are regretful, right? Things like this. If you engage in a staunch moral approach to things and you stick to those morals, and then you engage yourself with wholesome actions at all times through speech, through mind, through body, which I've talked about, that you will develop an internal confidence, an internal conviction, and you'll become steadfast. So in other words, you when when life out there gets confusing and there's a lot of things going around, along um, out there, a lot of waves of confusion and things like this, you will hold steadfast because you've anchored yourself into a staunch moral uh, foundation, staunch uh, and staunch wholesome action practice, I would say. Staunch, moral, wholesome 
practice I guess all action action practice so these things are important to navigate through fear and worry if fear and worry gets into your heart into your mind right it stifles you you'll be even more confused and everything you do oh miserable right that's the way to misery the idea is to turf fear out of the way turf confusion out of the way and embed yourself solidly uh, and take refuge in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha embed yourself there as a Buddhist uh, for non Buddhists for people who don't follow that uh, at least follow moral precepts and stay away from unwholesome deeds and and embed yourself uh, have those as your bedrock and you will definitely feel confident and or sense confidence and conviction and these these are what these these things here will steer you through life in the right way now good things good things are hard to develop good things are hard to get being moral and following the wholesome path means sacrificing a lot of things that you normally wouldn't it means really really uh, I guess leaving behind unwholesome action unwholesome people right in unwholesome environments right my environments that don't engage in correct moral behavior or moral action right that's what it means it means do not comply with evil deeds do not comply with anything evil just do not comply refuse and embed yourself in the bedrock of moral uprightness moral steadfastness and wholesome action steadfastness then you'll you'll know how to guide yourself through these turbulent times through any turbulent times and when it's good you'll even thrive even more all right so this is a little bit on how I think uh, we should turf out confusion and turf out fear and I'll add I didn't put worry in the title but worry I'll add that as well so I hope that makes sense for you and uh, if there's any questions please uh, you know uh, leave a comment and I'll have a look at that now just a quick update uh, I've created a new Twitter uh, handle, uh, a new Twitter account uh, for those who don't like Telegram and I've got an account on Gab now as well. Um, you can see it in the description. Uh, please feel free to, uh, to join. If you want to ask me any questions, you can ask me through there. Uh, also, uh, in the previous video, I mentioned our uh, Buddhist project in Italy. Uh, I've put the link in the description if you want to donate to that. Uh, or if you want to help in any way, uh, please let me know.